Hi, this is Real World Audio, and uh, I, I'm in the mood today of shooting videos rather than uh, just uh, typing in comments. And uh, now I'm in a really, really, really tough situation because uh, in search of the holy grail of loudspeakers, and I'm talking about off the beaten path, and Robert asked me a really, really tough question. <laughs> How about on the beaten path speakers? Oh my gosh, my goodness, wow. Uh, even my tongue gets twisted when, when I want to talk about that. Uh, okay, so I would not give uh, any recommendations about on the beaten path speakers because uh, to me they uh, they have not checked the, the category of Holy Grail speakers. I don't know any loudspeaker on the beaten path that can suit that category. Yes, uh, I would say on the beaten path, when we look at the loudspeakers, uh, the, the bulk, the meat of them is, I, I would say, like three out of five. And uh, we see some speakers which are four out of five, but uh, five out of five, uh, highest level, I I have yet to uh, experience that experience and uh, uh, so eventually when uh, my readers uh, you you tune into my channel then uh, you will notice that uh, my what you are offline what's going on I'm not offline oh thank you perfect now I'm back online so so you will notice that uh, when we look at my videos, uh, I am really off the beaten path because uh, there is like uh, so many uh, channels. So if if you look like uh, like that, there's like Steve Gutenberg, the Audiophiliac, and, and many others, and they are going really deep onto the beaten path, and then they are exploring what's available commercially, and I think that that's really great and really informative. Um, I, I really like when people share their ideas and their experiences, experiences with uh, audio equipment. And um, I would also like to share, because Robert, you asked uh, what I think about the beaten path uh, loudspeakers. Uh, so I, I, will, I will share my story, what I experienced with them is that at the very beginning of, I mean, at the beginning of my, of the serious part of my audio journey, I have heard uh, a couple loudspeakers. Some of them were very impressive to me at that time, but uh, sadly, uh, those that uh, I considered and, and I craved and I was looking for, they were just uh, incredibly out of reach. Uh, from me and I couldn't even dream that I, I can ever own anything like that so so the beaten path at the beginning of my audio journey was uh, was something that was not an option for me and uh, already at that uh, portion of my audio journey I had uh, some really enlightening experiences that of course when you uh, have more resources as a company to create products you have a potential to go much much further but just because something has a very high price tag on it it does not guarantee that uh, it's it's far further away on the beaten path compared to uh, a cheaper product and uh, and for example uh, I, will, I will share like two correlations that I have found uh, with uh, loudspeaker manufacturer companies. I, I really hope that they are uh, uh, closing their ears right now. I don't want to get uh, angry responses and um, um, actually one of them will be positive and the other one not so positive. And, uh, but, but anyway, fire it away, I'm, I'm sharing them. You know what? I will share the positive one first, and then uh, if audio companies are watching that, they can stop, and then they won't uh, have a traumatic experience. So, so my positive experience uh, was with AudioNote, 
is that uh, when going from their uh, cheaper loudspeaker to uh, their more expensive loudspeaker, I could hear that there was a big, big step up and, and the sound really transformed. And also the, the demands on, on, on the wallet transformed radically as well. And, and, and actually that was one piece in the puzzle that made me realize that uh, I, I cannot go on the beaten path if I want to achieve really high standards. But when we look at the beaten path, audio note is kind of, uh, is not on the beaten path. So they do a lot of things, which is, it makes it uh, quite unique as a company. And what they do with their loudspeakers, it, it is a very unconventional loudspeaker. Although I have to say it, it totally looks like, like an average loudspeaker. Let's, I'm talking about the AME. It's like a plain, plain Jane, simple looking uh, two-way loudspeaker. If you come across it at a thrift store, you would say, maybe I give a hundred bucks. And, uh, and it kind of like, it's like pulling your teeth. It's like, oh, I just too much money for these speakers. But when you listen to them, uh, they, they, how they look and how they sound, that there's like such a big disconnect as, as, as in people who have schizophrenia. It's just like uh, you, you are totally scrambled, like what on earth is going on? And, uh, uh, and when I heard the A&E's first, uh, after that, it took me uh, literally more than a decade to hear any loudspeaker that comes anywhere close to it in, in ability of uh, reproducing sound in a natural way. What I have found that on the beaten path, all the loudspeakers uh, went towards uh, uh, more and more mechanical, more and more plastic taste. Yes, as we upped the ante, then uh, we heard more resolution, better frequency range, better this, better that, more details, blacker black levels, and so on. But... Uh, the artificiality is was just in increasing at an alarming rate, and now I'm sharing my experience with the company, uh, which was the exact opposite of the experience with AudioNote, and uh, they are, I think, the biggest loudspeaker manufacturers in the high-end industry, and it's BMW, Bauer and Wilkins, and uh, and first I share it, it. It it was just this is so ironic. You guys would never believe it, and. I heard both their uh, cheapest loudspeaker and their most expensive loudspeaker. And guess what? Their cheapest loudspeaker, the, the tiny uh, king of the budget DM302, this was 20 years ago, actually more than 20 years ago now, 22 years, 23 years ago. Oh, no, guys, more than that. Jeez, over 25 years ago. It was like uh, late 90s. 19 something, 96, more than 96, about 97, 98. Okay, let's just stop the guessing game. But now you can uh, imagine that like 25 years ago, uh, what the bottom model of BMW was. And uh, I heard it in a, in a entry level audio file system. That was my first experience in the audiophile world. Before that, I never heard an audiophile system. It was with an NAD basic amp and, and, and the basic NAD CD player with basic Wonderhook cabling. And I was just so blown away. It had imaging. It had... Uh, it was wonderful. And, and I, I could enjoy uh, orchestral pieces in it, uh, vocals, everything. I was just... Uh, in the showroom and, and I was just totally blown away and sadly at that time even that was outside of my range that what I could afford so so think about that I was a university student at that time my priority was paying rent uh, dealing with you know uh, expenses that you have uh, tuition and also at that time I was really really uh, neck deep into martial arts and basically I spent all my money on uh, on instruction on learning martial arts uh, so I didn't have anything left aside for audio at that time just dreams and nothing more 
So back to that experience. Uh, so I had that amazing, astounding experience with those tiny BMW uh, Bauer Birkin speakers, and uh, then uh, actually, uh, eventually after that, I heard other speakers as well. Like for example, the Jadi Orchestra system with the Jadi Orchestra speakers which were uh, simply astonishing. At that time, it just totally blew my mind that it, it, it brought me to a high-level world of sound that I never imagined could exist. It, it really blew the small uh, Bauer Wilkin speakers uh, off the planet, but, but uh, it came at a very steep price. Compared to the BMW, it was like uh, seven, eight times more expensive, like totally uh, crazy, bonkers. Uh, but th those uh, small BMW speakers for that uh, price was just something amazing, a fantastic value, and and I think probably one of the best values on the beaten path that that I have experienced in in audio. And if you are at the entry level, you want to go into that's that's something which which was uh, at that time impressed the heck out of me. But I have to tell you guys, in 25 years, I have not run into that loudspeaker again. Uh, but I run into other BMWs, including the Nautilus, not not, not the DM series Nautilus, but the uh, de facto Nautilus, the 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 the, 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 the Konico loudspeaker, which was the most exp expensive loudspeaker at that time, 25 years ago, and I heard it at the high end show, and it was quad amped, four amplifiers, so one amp for each uh, uh, driver total of eight amplifiers, uh, uh, class A uh, miracles, which occupied like the half of the floor area in the room. It was just absolutely spectacular. But uh, guess guys what? Which was also absolutely spectacular, that, that Nautilus was the absolute worst sounding system of the show. And, and by, by a large margin, and, and imagine this uh, dichotomy, that there is this company and their cheapest loudspeaker, uh, it sounds better, it, it's more musical than their most expensive top-of-the-line model, which uh, costs more than a couple homes put together. And, uh, and later on, when I was a more experienced audiophile, then I, I heard uh, other BMW models in the DM series, the 600 series, uh, and so on, which, which are kind of like midline level. And, and I was really, really disappointed in them. And, and I thought that the cheapest model sounds better than those models. And, and I asked my mentor, Stu, about it. Like, Stu, am I going crazy? Am I imagining things? Is there something really messed up with my oral memory of how I remember equipment sound? Because uh, I have this illusion of myself that I have an extremely good oral memory. And even going back 20 years, I can recall sonic signatures of the equipment I, I listen to. And, and I'm a little bit at a loss when, when people listen to something and then uh, 30 seconds later, they listen to uh, different equipment and they can't tell the difference between the two. And they say, yeah, it's uh, uh, the one we, I heard a minute ago. How did it sound? I can't recall it. Guys, uh, this is something that uh, you practice. It's just like memory. Uh, recalling sonic signatures is just like memorizing text. If you could do it in the school, like learn uh, in a literature class, you learn a poem and recite it so it can be done with the oral memory and, and you can recall what you heard, what were the qualities. But to do that, you need to be aware of what are those qualities. What is uh, dynamics? Uh, what What is the correct tonality and so on? What is imaging focus, black levels, etc., etc., etc. And then the more you learn, the better you can recall sonic signatures and then sometimes, uh, like thinking back about uh, things like, like for example, when I recalled my oral memory of listening to those Nautilus speakers, uh, now recalling it 20 years later, now I recognize that they were 
quite likely not as bad as they sounded at the show. And, and why they sounded so bad, it, uh, it was uh, impacted by a couple of different factors. One of them was that all of the drivers, all four on each side were out of phase and and the and the amplifiers were not broken in and uh, and i can recall i can tell that by recalling that signature from 10 years ago and applying my current knowledge of what went wrong there so so if if i just say that uh, the nautilus is the absolute worst sound i ever heard and the uh, cheapest speaker of bmw is, is their best that i ever heard that's also correct and not correct because the nautilus could have been better sounding than what I heard, but that does not negate the fact that I heard it the way it was set up and uh, and it was at a show by the dealer who represented the company and 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 they and they did an absolute uh, nightmare job about it and indeed when there we co uh, compared the cheapest BMW versus the most expensive the cheapest by far by, by really really far sounded much much better in every aspect and um, that's why the beaten path to me is is, is a little bit uh, uh, winding and, uh, and and eventually if you know how to navigate it uh, you can travel it but at the very beginning of my audio journey uh, I I had a few glimpses on it and and what I saw is that uh, First of all, we cannot trust the pricing alone, and second, uh, yes, uh, at very cheap levels we can have a nice sound, but uh, but I got a taste of what is achievable, and for any reasonable price, that's just that kind of sound is so 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 far out of reach that uh, basically that was my last look at the beaten path and I turned my back on it and I never ever considered it again. Of course, uh, my mentors too, he was a dealer and then he carried lots of lines and, uh, and I visited uh, Tom's uh, store too, he's a good friend of mine as well. And then he carried other lines, and then I went to other stores. I li listened to my friends' systems and everything. So I, it was not I. I was keeping a, a shot eye. I was not blinding myself to reality, but uh, I made a commitment to recreate what uh, what what the best of the uh, beaten path can offer and then I realized that the beaten path is, is really not something where I can uh, I can evolve because the beaten path is not going towards natural sound it's going towards a highly sculpted highly artificial very plasticky sound it gives is it, uh, it can give a phenomenal it, exceptional illusion I'm not denying that and 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 and, and I have to admit and confess that from time to time I crave to have a little bit of a listen into that kind of sound, that, that, that type of world. And, and that's why I, I have a, a system like that set up in my bedroom because sometimes I, I can listen to that. And, you, and uh, more than anything else, just use it as a reference to keep my aim true and, and to and, and, and to hear uh, and uh, experience that uh, what are the options there? Am I still going in the right direction? And, uh, and I think that that's what it is. On the beaten path, we are going more and more towards that uh, artificial sound. And, and that's because uh, the technology is going towards uh, higher current, higher excursion, lower efficiency and higher power thrown at it that's the beaten path and also uh, the, that's the electronic part the the cabinet part of the beaten path is the uh, getting uh, forcefully rid of the cabinet resonances so basically treating the loudspeaker the driver instead inside of your loudspeaker the back pressure so half of the output 50% of the output that comes out 
from the driver. Uh, the, the, the beaten path treats it as public enemy number one, and all the cabinets are built to combat it. I'm off the beaten path, and what I'm doing is using the back pressure to get everything out of it and treating it as what it is, the 50% of the output of our driver, and I'm using, I'm getting every inch, every percentage, every bit out of it and translating into uh, acoustic energy that works with me. I'm not trying to fight it because it's a fight we can never win. It, uh, it, it's, it, and at the best, it's a stall. We, it can be taken only to a draw when you fight your driver. It's going to uh, cause problems. Yes, it will give us a more controlled sound, a more uh, artificial sound, but yes, that's what it, it, it will give. So if we want to progress towards that path, to, uh, to have the apparent feel when we listen to the sound that it has control, so uh, then that's the solution. So thank you, Robert, for this really tricky question. And uh, oh my goodness, uh, my answer was over 20 minutes. Uh, I just can't uh, shut up. Uh, anyway, so I hope nobody fell asleep or those of you who fall asleep, just it's uh, wake up time. <laughs> and have a wonderful day. Bye bye.